Well, my next guest is Aram Hamparian, the executive director at the Armenian National Committee of America. He joins us tonight from our Washington, D.C. studios. Mr. Hamparian, it's good to have you on the program. What are you hearing about this conflict? How close are we to a full-scale war? Uh, actually, uh, too close for comfort. Uh, uh, Azerbaijan has risked a, a regional war amid a global pandemic. Uh, they've threatened to blow up Armenia's nuclear power station. This has not just regional, but also global implications. The area that is um, being fought over, Nagorno-Karabakh, it is internationally recognized as belonging to Azerbaijan. Um, is that wrong? And, and would you say, is that a source of this ongoing conflict? Uh, the only claim that Azerbaijan has to uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, which we call Artsakh, is that uh, Joseph Stalin uh, stole it for them. And, and the fact that uh, the Soviets, uh, you know, gerrymandered the Caucasus is no basis for uh, Azerbaijan uh, to claim sovereignty over Artsakh. Artsakh is, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh is an ancient Armenian land. It's been Armenian as long as there has been in Armenia. My, my last trip before this pandemic was to Nagorno-Karabakh, where I prayed at, at a monastery, Dativank, that was established in the first century. Well, if the ties there um, are, are so deep, why can we not then find peace? And, and if, as it sounds like what you're describing, um, the area then should belong to Armenia. I think the, the, the area should belong to the people who live there and that self-determination should determine uh, the status uh, of the region. Um, Azerbaijan doesn't want to accept that. The UN has grown from 50 members to uh, close to 200 because the arc of history uh, bends towards self-determination and democracy, uh, greater mm -hmm. independence. Azerbaijan, you know, is resisting that. And, uh, and it's clear that they're the aggressor here. You can see that from the fact that they're the disruptive force. They want to change the status quo. You can listen to the words of their own leaders. They talk all the time about uh, conquering um, uh, Armenia and Artsakh. And finally, uh, they're the only side that's blocking uh, the gunfire locators that the mm -hmm. OSC would like to deploy. These gunfire locators will allow the international community to, to kind of like call balls and strikes on the border to see who's starting the aggression. Armenia embraces that, uh, but, but Azerbaijan has resisted it. You have written that U.S. diplomats and U.S. media outlets speak of and write about Armenia and Azerbaijan having parity, which you say um, they don't have, that you say it's wrong to even write about that. Why is that? Uh, so basically what happens is every time there's an attack, um, the international community says, well, we don't know who initiated it. So they uh, issue a, a generic call on both parties uh, to refrain from violence. Uh, what that effectively does is it takes the, the perpetrator and rewards them. It emboldens them to be uh, more violent because they're not going to be called out. And it puts the, the, the victims at, at greater risk. So instead of having this artificial neutrality or false uh, parity, the, the international community should deploy those gunfire locators. And the next time there's an attack, Neutral monitors can tell um, everybody, including the parties, you know, who initiated the aggression, and they can you know, be held to, held to account. There is this complaint of disengagement by the U.S. in the region. And I guess a cynic might say that if Azerbaijan has launched a military offensive, one of the reasons that it may have done so is because the U.S. is so disengaged at the moment. Do you agree with that? Uh, I, th I think I do. And I think that if the United States were more forceful in challenging Azerbaijan's aggression, in cutting off, for example, the military, the more than $100 million in U.S. military that's gone to Baku, if we put that on the line, if we put that assistance on the table, I think we'll see Azerbaijan step back from uh, the brink of disaster. Okay. Aram Hamparian, the executive director at the Armenian National Committee of America. Mr. Hamparian, we appreciate your time and your valuable insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.